In this video, we are going to cover diagnostic tests and procedures of cardiovascular system. In this, first we will cover cardiac enzymes or cardiac biomarkers. What are cardiac enzymes or cardiac biomarkers? When heart experiences damage or stress due to lack of oxygen, it releases substance called cardiac enzymes into the bloodstream. Enzymes are proteins that help our body manage metabolism and other chemical processes. Enzymes perform specialized functions like blood clotting, brain, spine and nerve function. It helps breathing, it helps digestion, musculoskeletal movements, it helps remove waste from our body through urination. Cardiac enzyme marker test is a blood test to measure specific biological markers in the blood. High levels of cardiac enzymes can be a sign of a heart attack or another heart problem. Cardiac enzymes are also called cardiac biomarkers. Where do we get a cardiac enzyme marker test? A cardiac enzyme marker test requires a blood draw. The blood draw takes just a few minutes. In an emergency situation, the blood draw takes place in the emergency department or hospital. For non-urgent situations, the test may take place at healthcare provider's office or a blood testing lab. Who needs a cardiac enzyme test? The healthcare provider may order a cardiac enzyme test if anyone has symptoms of a possible heart problem. These symptoms include chest pain, dizziness, nausea, profuse sweating, shortness of breath. In such patients, cardiac enzyme test is to be done. How the test helps healthcare providers? Cardiac biomarkers help healthcare providers know if symptoms are due to a heart attack that is myocardial infarction or angina or heart failure or another heart problem. Increase in cardiac enzymes can also indicate acute coronary syndrome or myocardial ischemia. Treatments for these conditions vary and accurate diagnosis is critical to ensure to receive the appropriate care. What's the purpose of cardiac biomarkers? Healthcare providers measure cardiac marker levels to screen for heart damage and other problems. To diagnose heart conditions that cause symptoms such as chest pain, angina, and shortness of breath. To monitor how well heart medications and heart surgery work. To treat heart conditions like acute coronary syndrome, coronary artery disease and atherosclerosis. Elevated levels of cardiac enzymes in the blood are a sign of heart damage, stress or inflammation. Our heart releases these proteins after a heart attack. Heart may also release cardiac biomarkers when low oxygen levels cause the heart to work harder than usual. An enzyme marker test measures heart enzymes, cardiovascular function and disease are evaluated by blood tests that indirectly monitor heart function and structural damage. What are the types of cardiac enzymes? There are different types of cardiac biomarkers. All of them are either enzymes or proteins. Elevated heart enzymes may show that the patient have cardiovascular disease or other heart problems. When myocardial tissue is damaged, for example because of myocardial infarction, cellular injury results in the release of intracellular enzymes and proteins, that is cardiac enzymes, isoenzymes and biochemical markers into the bloodstream, which in turn causes elevated peripheral blood enzyme levels. The first cardiac marker test is troponin test. Because the heart is the only organ that makes troponin, a biomarker test for this enzyme is a primary test healthcare providers use to detect heart damage from a heart attack or ACS, acute coronary syndrome. Troponin levels can rise for up to 12 hours after a heart attack. They stay elevated for up to 2 weeks. Troponin complex 6 located on the thin filament of the contractile apparatus or striated and skeletal muscle and consists of three subunits is composed of three proteins. They are troponin C, troponin T, troponin I. These are the most sensitive and specific tests for myocardial damage. In the presence of myocardial damage, 
the troponin complex on the myofibril breaks down and the subunits of troponin are slowly released into the bloodstream troponin is released during myocardial infarction from the cystocytic pool of the myocytes its subsequent release is prolonged with degradation of actin and myosin filaments isoforms of the protein t and i are specific to myocardium differential diagnosis of troponin elevation includes acute infarction severe pulmonary embolism causing acute right heart overload heart failure myocarditis troponins can also calculate in fact size but the peak must be measured in the third day after myocyte injury troponin is released in 2 to 4 hours and persists for up to 7 days normal values of troponin ir less than 0.3 ng per ml and troponin t less than 0.2 ng per ml in patients with non severe asymptomatic aortic valve stenosis and no overt coronary artery disease the increased troponin t that is above 14 ng per ml was found associated with an increased 5 year event rate of ischemic cardiac events that is myocardial infarction percutaneous coronary intervention or coronary artery bypass surgery high sensitivity troponin test high sensitivity troponin testing detects troponins at much lower concentrations and as early as 60 to 90 minutes after myocardial cell injury also detects circulating troponins in stable cad coronary artery disease in the absence of myocardial necrosis normal values are low less than 14 ng per liter for women and less than 22 ng per liter for men after the initial blood sample blood is collected at 12 hour then daily for 3 to 5 days next is creatinine kinase creatinine kinase has a 98 percentage sensitivity for acute myocardial infarction 72 hours after infarction ck is a catalyst for energy production and is found in the brain myocardium and skeletal muscle ck is sensitive but not specific for myocardial injury ck iso enzymes are more specific than ck three ck iso enzymes have been identified ck mm ck mp ck bb with only ck mp is related to the heart the specific of ck mp is greater than 85 percentage and in some cases as high as 100 percentage but false positives do occur increased levels of ckmp is highly indicative of myocardial infarction serum levels increases within 3 to 6 hour after myocardial infarction peak after 12 to 24 hours normalized within 48 hours it is relatively specific when skeletal muscle damage is not present the ckmp isoform of creatinine kinase is expressed in heart muscle it resides in the cytosol and facilitates movements of high energy phosphates into and out of mitochondria since it has a short duration it cannot be used for late diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction but can be used to suggest in fact extension if levels rise again this is usually back to normal within 2 to 3 days normal range is 2 to 6 ng per ml next is myoglobin myoglobin is a small oxygen binding protein found in cardiac and skeletal muscles and is rapidly released into the blood stream myoglobin is sensitive very early after injury but has poor sensitivity over time and can generate many false positive results when myoglobin levels are assessed with ckmp results sensitivity increases as high as 96 percentage but specificity can drop to as low as 81 percentage myoglobin is directly related to muscle mass and is affected by age levels increase with age race blacks have higher levels 
gender, women have higher levels and physical activity. Myoglobins can be elevated in the presence of reinfection, skeletal muscle or neuromuscular disorders, trauma, severe burns, electrical shock, alcohol withdrawal, delirium, metabolic disorders, systemic lupus, erythematosis, strenuous exercise, renal failure, IM injections, cardiac bypass surgery, seizures and heart failure. The level rises within two hours after cell death with a rapid decline in the level after seven hours. However, it is not cardiac specific. Myoglobin is used less than the other markers. Next is homeocysteine. Homeocysteine is a toxic byproduct of the metabolism of amino acid methionine into cysteine. Homeocysteine exerts a direct cytotoxic effect on the endothelium of blood vessels by blocking the production of nitrous oxide, resulting in decreased pliability of vessels and development of atherosclerotic plaque. Increased homeocysteine levels ultimately result in atherosclerosis, CAD, MI, stroke, thromboembolism and peripheral vascular disease. Hyperhomocysteinemia is related to gender, advanced age, smoking, hypertension, elevated cholesterol, decreased folate, decreased levels of vitamin B6 and B12, and lack of exercise. Homocysteine can also be elevated in the presence of other disease, drug use, and caffeine intake. Normal value is 4.5 to 11.9 mcmol per liter and it depends upon age and gender. Next is B-type natriuretic peptide, BNP. It is synthesized in the ventricular myocardium and released as a response. BNP is released in response to atrial and ventricular stretch. It serves as a marker for heart failure. The most important use of natriuretic peptides is in helping to establish the diagnosis of heart failure in a patient in the urgent care setting in whom the diagnosis is uncertain. BNP is used for diagnosis and prognosis of suspected heart failure. Plasma levels of BNP increase in the presence of left ventricular systolic and diastolic dysfunction, particularly in the presence of decompensating heart failure. An increased BNP level identifies patients at the highest risk of developing sudden cardiac death and those who are in need of heart transplant. It is also associated with heart failure readmissions. BNP is considered as a useful marker of myocardial infarction and is used to guide therapy. BNP levels should be less than 100 ng per ml. The higher the level, the more severe the heart failure. Pro-brain natriuretic peptide. This is increased in patients with heart failure. It has been approved as a marker for acute congestive heart failure. N-terminal pro-brain natriuretic peptide is an inactivated peptide that tends to circulate longer and can detect earlier forms of heart failure. Both tests show similar information, although the absolute values of ENT pro BNP are about 5 to 10 times higher than BNP. With more data, the value of ENT pro BNP is higher than BNP for treatment, monitoring, and managing heart failure patients. The reference values of BNP and ENT pro BNP are different to exclude or confirm a diagnosis of heart failure. These values also depend on age and gender and are higher in elderly persons and women. Normal findings are as follows. BNP is less than 100 ng per ml. NT pro BNP is less than 300 ng per ml. If the BNP is more than 400 ng per ml is indicative of heart failure. Next is C-reactive protein. It is an inflammatory marker that may be an important risk factor for atherosclerosis and ischemic heart diseases. CRP is produced by the liver in response to systemic cytokinesis. Elevated CRP is associated with AMI, stroke and progression of peripheral vascular disease. 
However, it can also be elevated with any inflammatory process. In addition to revealing events associated with CAD, CRP can also be used to identify patients at risk for developing CAD. Patient is having less than 1 mg per dl is having lowest risk. If the patient is having 1 to 3 mg per dl is having moderate risk and the patient with more than 3 mg is having highest risk. Next is highly sensitive C-reactive protein. It detects an inflammatory process such as that associated with the development of arthrothrombosis. A level less than 1 mg per L is considered low risk and a level greater than 3 mg per L places the client at high risk for heart disease. Next is copeptin. Copeptin is a stable surrogate marker of vasopressin. The concentration of copeptin in the blood circulation ranges from 1 to 12 pmol per liter in healthy individuals. The levels of copeptin are slightly higher in men than in women and are not influenced by age. Increased levels highly indicative of MI, higher in men after exercise and with stress, influenced by fasting and water load. Copeptin is a diagnostic and prognostic biomarker in CVD, including the rapid rollout of acute myocardial infarction, mortality prediction in heart failure and stroke. Next is factor I or fibrinogen. It is directly linked to increased cardiovascular risk. It is involved in the coagulation cascade that is converting fibrinogen to fibrin by thrombin, stimulates smooth muscle cell migration and proliferation and promotes platelet aggregation which increases blood viscosity. Next is D-dimer. It may be done to evaluate for aortic dissection when chest pain is present. It is a degradation product of cross-linked fibrin and a reflex activation of extrinsic pathway of the coagulation cascade by tissue factor exposed in the aortic media by the intimal tear. It is also used to evaluate for the presence of thrombus or embolus. Next is glycogen phosphorylase isoenzyme BB. Glycogen phosphorylase isoenzyme BB is one of the three isoforms of glycogen phosphorylase. This isoform of the enzyme is in cardiac and brain tissue. Because of the blood-brain barrier, GPBB can be seen as specific to heart muscle. GPBB is one of the new cardiac markers which are considered to improve early diagnosis in acute coronary syndrome. During the process of ischemia, GPBB is converted into a soluble form and is released into the blood. A rapid rise in blood levels can be seen in myocardial infarction and unstable angina. GPPB is elevated 1 to 3 hours after process of ischemia. Next is ischemia modified albumin. IMA can be a sign of myocardial ischemia. This blood flow problem in our heart can occur due to coronary artery disease or coronary spasm. Healthcare providers usually order an IMA test along with an electrocardiogram to confirm or rule out ACS. Now let us see what are the other tests used to diagnose a heart attack or heart damage. Complete blood count. The red blood cell count decreases in rheumatic heart disease and infective endocarditis and increases in conditions characterized by inadequate tissue oxygenation. The white blood cell count increases in infectious and inflammatory diseases of the heart and after MI because large number of white blood cells are needed to dispose of the necrotic tissue resulting from the infection. An elevated hematocrit level can reflect vascular oleum depletion. Decreases in hemoglobin and hematocrit levels can indicate anemia. Blood gas test to measure oxygen, carbon dioxide, and acid levels. Blood coagulation factors. An increase in coagulation factors can occur during and after MI, placing the client at greater risk for thrombophlebitis and formation of clots in the coronary arteries. Serum lipids. The lipid profile measures serum cholesterol, 
triglyceride and lipoprotein levels. The lipid profile is used to assess the risk of developing coronary artery disease, LDH, lactate dehydrogenase. LDH is not as specific as troponin. Approximate peak is 72 hours. LDH catalyzes the conversion of a pyruvate to lactate. LDH1 isozyme is normally found in the heart muscle and LDH2 is found predominantly in blood serum. A high LDH1 level 2 LDH2 suggests MI. LDH levels are also high in tissue breakdown or hemolysis. It can mean cancer, meningitis, encephalitis or HIV. Lipoprotein A is a molecule. This is similar to low density lipoprotein cholesterol. Lipoprotein A or LPA is a modified form of low density lipoprotein LDL. It increases cholesterol deposits in the arterial wall, enhances oxidation of LDLC, and inhibits fibrinolysis, resulting in the formation of atherosclerotic plagues and thrombosis. Treatment of elevated lipoprotein A is suggested only for patients with a history of premature vascular disease without other risk factors. Next is microalbuminuria. A small amount of protein in the urine has been a marker for endothelial dysfunction in cardiovascular disease. Now let us see electrolytes. Potassium. Hypokalemia causes increased cardiac electrical instability when regular dysarrhythmias and increased risk of digoxin toxicity. In hypokalemia, the ECG shows flattening and inversion of the T wave and appearance of a U wave and EST depression. Hyperkalemia causes asystole and ventricular dysarrhythmias. In hypokalemia, the ECG may show tall peak T wave widening, QRS complexes, prolonged PR intervals, and flat P waves. Sodium level. The serum sodium level decreases with the use of diuretics. The serum sodium level decreases in heart failure, indicating water excess. Calcium. Hypocalcemia can cause ventricular dysarrhythmias, prolonged ST and QT intervals, and cardiac arrest. Hypercalcemia can cause a shortened ST segment and widened T wave, atrioventricular block, tachycardia or bradycardia, digitalis hypersensitivity and cardiac arrest. Phosphorus levels should be interpreted with calcium levels because the kidney retain or excrete them in an inverse relationship. Magnesium. A low magnesium level can cause ventricular tachycardia and fibrillation. Electrocardiographic changes that may be observed with hypomagnesemia include tall T wave and depressed ST segments. A high magnesium level can cause muscle weakness, hypotension and bradycardia. Electrocardiographic changes that may be observed with hypermagnesemia include a prolonged PR interval and widened QRS complex. Electrolyte and mineral imbalances can cause cardiac electrical instability that can result in life-threatening dysarrhythmias. Blood urea nitrogen. The blood urea nitrogen level is elevated in heart disorders such as heart failure and cardiogenic shock that reduce renal circulation. Next is blood glucose. An acute cardiac episode can elevate the blood glucose level. In addition to lab test, chest x-ray, echocardiogram such as transesophageal echocardiogram, electrocardiogram, exercise stress test, or nuclear cardiac stress test, angiogram, positron emission tomography scan can be done to the patient to rule out cardiac problems.